So hey folks, welcome back to the channel. And on today's video, we're on the 2023 Triumph Rocket 3R. This is the Chrome edition, the new editions that they've done for 2023. And in this video, towards the end, we're gonna actually have a look at what is this bike? Because I've been trying to figure it out all week. You know, is it a roadster? Is it a cruiser? Or is it a muscle bike? Now what we're going to do on this video first, we're going to show you around some of the bike and talk through some of the specs on this bike, which are pretty impressive. We'll start her up, we'll give you a, a noise check and also show you what she sounds like on the open road. But first, let's get into the engine because it's, uh, it's a pretty impressive engine that they've produced here. This is the triple engine that is 2,458 cc, so a whopping, whopping engine in this motorcycle and also it produces 221 newton meters of torque at 4,000 RPM, which is the biggest torque engine for any motorcycle in the industry today. The engine produces 165 brake horsepower or 167 PS. The price of this bike, yep, let's get on to that. So it's 22,895 pounds, UK pounds, which is quite steep really, but uh, is it worth the money? We'll look at that at the end of the video. Uh, the base R that you can buy is 21,995, so you're paying a 900 pound difference just for the chrome tank. Now this bike comes in two flavors. You've got the R model just here, and then you've got the GT model, which I'll pop a picture on screen just now. On the GT, the handlebars are a little bit swept back. You've got a sissy bar on the back for a pillion, and also the, uh, the foot pegs are forward on that model. Now I did ride that last year, uh, I'll pop a link in the right hand corner just here if you wanted to check that bike out. Uh, also we'll talk at the end which one I think is more comfier. The bike as you can probably tell is uh, very heavy um, but because it's quite a low bike and that engine is very low um, it's quite easy to push around on my drive. Um, the bike does come in at 291 kilos though. The fuel tank on the bike, uh, it's very, very wide. Uh, it is only 18 litres. Uh, by the looks of it from the top, it looks like it's uh, a lot more. Um, but yeah, 18 litres and you're getting about 40 miles per gallon, which isn't too bad for a 2,500cc engine. You've got 47 millimetre forks on the front. These are fully adjustable upside down forks. And then you've got a monoshock on the back, which is also again, fully adjustable. On the front, you've got the uh, Brembo M4 Stylema four pot calipers on 320mm discs. And on the rear, you've also got a Brembo four piston caliper, which uh, gives it four on the front, four piston on the back. Really good stopping power on this bike, but it needs to be with it being 291 kilos. You have cornering ABS and traction control on this beast, and the rear tire is a 240 profile so very very wide and the front is a 150. The turning is not that quick on this bike from riding it this last week. You've got to think about a little bit the corners that you're going into and the radius that you can get around that corner. Uh, it's not too bad, uh, just takes a little bit more thinking about if you're used to uh, riding other bikes. So wheels on the bike, you've got a cast wheel on the front and back, you've got 17 inches on the front and a 16 inch rear wheel. You have a TFT dashboard that is also on the Scrambler XE and XC. Personally, I would have preferred the twin clocks that you see on the Bonnevilles on this motorcycle. I think it would have suited it a little bit better. But you do have all the information that you need on this motorcycle. Nice little startup screen. And then you've got a digital taco uh, with the speedometer, all digital. You've got your uh, miles per tank left, fuel gauge, uh, how many miles per gallon you're doing. And uh, also there's some configurable menus on here. You do have some mode options. You've got road, sport, rider and rain. The switch gear on the left and the right is pretty similar to my Tiger. Uh, in fact, all the switch gear on the modern bike seems to be going this way other than the, uh, the Bonneville range. Uh, so I'm quite familiar with this switch gear. Uh, it's just the, the menu toggle switch sometimes gets confused with the, uh, the indicator left and right. But once you've ridden it a few times, you get used to that. Now, because it's uh, keyless ignition, you've got uh, keyless steering lock and uh, obviously the fuel tank is actually operated with a key and it's a nice Monza fuel cap. Now, 
I'm a little bit confused where this rocket sits because uh, in the olden days, and I'm talking between 2004 and 2017, you had this. Now this was the old rocket. As you can see here, nice fairing, very comfortable, uh, very laid back, good weather protection, a real cruiser. So I would say from 2004 to 2017, this bike was a cruiser. Then I think it's morphed in something like a muscle bike, really. Uh, so you've kind of taken away that cruiser effect. Um, as I said, uh, Triumph call this a roadster. It's not a cruiser. It's not something you'd want to take on long journeys. The seat initially is comfortable. After about an hour, it, uh, it feels quite firm underneath you. The bars are quite stretched. They could do with being a little bit further back, about 20 millimeter. And I think out of riding the GT and the R version just here, I would prefer the GT for comfort. It's a little bit more comfort with a forward foot peg position. The bars are a little bit more swept back and uh, I thought the seat was uh, a little bit comfier on that or it could just be the ergonomics between your legs and uh, the triangle on the bike. Now the question is, have Triumph lost their way if they've taken this bike from what was a cruiser into a roadster as they call it or a muscle bike as I'd call it? Um, what would you use this bike for? And at 23 and a bit uh, thousand pounds, would you buy this bike as a second bike? You couldn't use this as your only bike if you were doing uh, different styles of riding, some touring. Um, you could, um, but it wouldn't be the comfiest thing to do it on. And also for luggage as well, it'd be quite difficult to put on this motorcycle. So the question in my mind uh, that I've been pondering over all week is what is this bike? What is it for? I think if you've got a lot of money and you want something that's a bit of bling, a talking point at the cafes and things, I think this definitely ticks the boxes. Um, while I've been riding this the last week, uh, there's been a lot of people coming over to me saying how beautiful this thing is, how, how good it looks. So yeah, uh, Triumph have done a very good job of styling and things on this bike, but I do think it's one of the bikes, I've ridden all the bikes over the years, and there is um, definitely a couple that stand out, and I mean stand out in maybe one that I wouldn't purchase myself, uh, one being the Rocket 3 or the Rocket 3 GT, and the other bike I couldn't get on with initially, this is a big point actually with the motorcycle industry, the other bike was the uh, Speed Triple. Uh, I haven't ridden the new one, um, but initially when I got that bike off Triumph about a year ago, I rode it for the first time, didn't really like it on the first ride, and the same happened with this bike when I took it out for the first ride. I think you need to get used to a bike, you need to ride a bike a little bit longer, maybe get off the bike and get on the bike next day and ride it again to actually come to love the bike and find its quirks and everything like that. I don't think uh, where dealers offer you a ride out of a half an hour or an hour, you can't get a feel for any motorcycle in that time and uh, having ridden a lot of bikes, I can certainly say that. So this bike is growing on me, um, but it's not one that I've purchased myself. So if this is a roadster, uh, I call it a muscle bike because that's what it is basically, loads of power. It is lovely and smooth though on the throttle, even going through town, 30 mile an hour, second gear, perfect. Uh, so they've got that really spot on. Um, but yeah, a, a bike that you can cruise on, uh, a bike that you can tour on, long distance, put luggage on that's comfy, I think really is uh, out of the Bonneville range, the Speedmaster. Um, that's got forward foot peg position, it's really comfortable, uh, it's a beautiful bike to look at, and it's half the price of this. So out of the two side by side, um, if I was looking for that style of bike, I would definitely go and buy the Speedmaster. Uh, if you're looking at this and you've seen the Speedmaster as well, I would say um, go out and ride both. Like I say, it's hard to tell in one hour, um, but you will get a big impression from the Speedmaster and also this bike. So uh, it's personal choice really, and uh, if you've got a big bag of cash. Now, what does the bike look like ergonomically when I sit on the bike? So. I'm six foot two, I have an inside leg of 32 inches, and uh, yeah, my knees are bent and I'm flat foot on this motorcycle. Um, like I say, the bar position, your arms are pretty much straight once you sat on the seat, and when you put your feet on the pegs, because of the wide tank, uh, it's a little bit, I wouldn't say an awkward position, but it, you can feel that that is a wide tank, and the triangle 
on the legs just there is a little bit more bent up um, than on some other bikes I've ridden. Um, so yeah, the seating position isn't that comfortable. Um, like I say, the seat on the bike is pretty sculpted and uh, it's pretty firm. It does have some spring to it. You've got a pillion seat on here as well, a small one. Um, no real um, back protection or anything to lean against for them. Uh, you do have some nice pillion foot pegs that uh, fold out just here. Um, so uh, those are really nice and really well styled into the motorcycle. The bike has a shaft drive, so no chain maintenance or anything to look at. Six speed gearbox and uh, yeah, I do feel a little bit of heat coming from these uh, pipes just here on my leg on the right hand side. That's the only negative and in this country it's quite cool. If you were in a hot country, I would imagine that might become an issue, especially if you're at traffic lights and in, in town and things like that. I also notice it's got a DIN socket on the dash at the front, which is great. So you can put a sat nav or wire your phone up to that, which is uh, fantastic. It's got um, adjustable brake and clutch levers. You've got a hydraulic clutch on this motorcycle as well. Nice exhaust, uh, twin exhaust going from three into two on here. Like I said, I'll give you a, uh, a sound check just on that just now. And then on the front, you've got nice twin headlights that they put on these, LED indicators, bar and mirrors. So I hope you've liked that little walk round of the Triumph Rocket 3R Chrome Edition. And uh, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, then uh, appreciate it if you can hit that subscribe button. According to Google Analytics, about 80% of the people that watch the videos aren't subscribers. So if you're not, appreciate it if you can hit it and also give us a thumbs up, guys. That'll be uh, really good for the channel and help it along. Next video up on the channel, I'll be showing you all the accessories that I've put on the Triumph Tiger 1200 Rally Pro, ready for my trip in August. Uh, the trip in August, I've decided on a route. I'm going to be going down to a place called Fossen, I think called Fussen, Fussen, I think it's called, in uh, South Germany, where they filmed The Great Escape. I'm then going to be heading down into Austria, through Austria down to Pisa in Italy, uh, before heading back along the uh, south and probably up through the Route Napoleon in France to come back to the UK. So uh, that's the August trip sorted. Uh, that's the rough plan anyway, it can always change on the way, but uh, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a big like. Ciao for now.